follow there. So, my, uh, my video production has been very, very slight. Uh, this is only the second video I'll put out in a month. And um, that's largely because I simply struggle to find any time now to record. But um, I think things are going to improve. And I'm making this a follow-up to my previous video. <clears throat> I have been receiving care now for a week. Um, it has been an interesting experience, and I thought it would be uh, it would be interesting to report back and um, let you guys know what it's like to uh, to live this kind of life. So. Um, I've been out of hospital for a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm in constant pain. My stomach feels like it's... It feels like someone's got, like, claws in my stomach and it's constantly pulling at my stomach and then occasionally I feel like I'm being stabbed. It is... It's not excruciating pain, but it is constant, unrelenting pain. It makes everything very tiring. I sleep a hell of a lot. However, my lifestyle is improving, markedly improving. Before I had this problem, before I ended up in hospital, before these hernias, I was struggling anyway. Um, I was struggling to maintain my home. I was struggling to um, to follow my medication. I I wasn't eating a healthy diet by a long way. I was basically subsisting on takeaway food, which was costing me a small fortune. Um, I couldn't afford it. Um, I have maxed out a credit card um, because I ended up spending so much money on um, fast food and convenience in order to not have to do stuff for myself. Um, and it was getting harder and harder to do basic, simple things like washing my hair and showering. Now, I get regular care. I have a care come in the morning and a care come in the evening. It's currently 20 to 8 in the morning. And my care is due probably around 10 o'clock because I take my medication at half 10. They might come an hour early, they might come an hour late, it's not a big deal. Um, I don't think they've ever come any later than half ten. They have come as early as nine o'clock in the morning before today. So I think it depends on when people are available, uh, largely because um, I do not feel comfortable with male carers, uh, which is something I had to discover firsthand. Um, it's a completely irrational thing, but it's apparently fairly common, apparently a lot of a lot of men request female carers and a lot of women request male carers, so it's actually not that unusual. But um, yeah, I was originally assigned a male carer. Um, he was a lovely guy. Um, he was uh, perfectly um, respectable and, uh, and professional. I just found myself feeling uncomfortable. I felt, I felt on edge around him. And this person has to be in my home every day, uh, cooking my meals and making... And, and, helping me with basic tasks, and I have to be comfortable enough to be naked in front of this person. Literally naked in front of this person, because they have to help me in and out of the shower and help me wash. Um, I can't wash my own hair. Um, I can't stretch up. It's too, there's too much risk on my stomach. So, um, this is the kind of thing that I need someone I can feel completely comfortable around. And likewise, they need to feel completely comfortable around me. Uh, so, I I have to uh, I have to kind of um, account for the the schedule of the carers and the agency and who they have available because of course they can't provide me with a carer if they don't have one. So if I'm saying I you know I'm I'm only willing to uh, to accept specific carers, I have to wait until they're free. So that that's fair. That, that's you know that's a a reasonable expectation. I am really, really lucky to be living in, in the UK. Um, the UK, for all of its faults, for all of the political issues that I raise, and I raise them regularly, um, the UK is one of the only countries on earth 
well, I would be able to live like this. Because I have full disability, I get a full, ben a full system of benefits, and I um, am in receipt of this care, and I had a finance assessment, and I am getting the vast majority, something like 80 to 90% of my care fees are being paid by the government. Um, my contribution, whilst it's, it's still money, it is still a, a fair chunk of money, it's not nothing. I'm still paying enough money that I will notice it. Um, it is still a pitifully small amount. What I'm paying would not cover the wages of the carers for a day, let alone a week. So what I pay would be enough to maybe pay for a single day's care, and I pay that per week. Um, so that gives you an idea of just how little I'm paying. My finances are fairly stable. They're not perfect, but they're fairly stable. Um, I still have my disability coming in, and I should be able to afford the care to a reasonable degree. It's going to mean cutting back on a few things, but that's okay. And hopefully, if anything, it will save me some money because I won't be relying on delivery and take out food all the time because I'll be eating proper food. I can now order in proper food and because there's someone who's, who's able to cook for me, I'm eating better meals. This week, I've eaten proper dinners rather than take out food, rather than 2,000 calories worth of pizza or Chinese takeout. I'm now eating eight to 900 calories of properly home-cooked foods with vegetables in it, which you don't get if you order a pizza. No, no, adding, adding like a little bit of chopped pepper onto the pizza doesn't count. Um, I had a chicken casserole uh, for dinner uh, yesterday. I'm going to be having the same chicken casserole for dinner today because it was cooked in a slow cooker. And uh, that was filled with various different vegetables. It was really nice. That was cooked by one of the carers. Fantastic meal. Uh, the slow cooker was a Christmas present from a friend. And honestly, that alone will help me lose the weight and will put me on the road to recovery. Um, just knowing that I'm going to be eating proper meals is going to make a huge, huge difference for me. So what does this mean for me going forwards and for the channel? Well... I have been reading almost nothing, if I'm honest. And the last week I have been focused on, on talking to the carers, uh, receiving the care, going through my, my home and you know, planning out uh, meals and things like that, getting to grips with what's happening there. And I know it sounds silly, but I have the morning care. I'll then find that I, I'm just resting, often falling asleep in the day. Of the evening care, I maybe have one to two hours where I feel like I can do something. I'm, I'm watching a little bit of YouTube and maybe I'll watch a TV program. Um, I've barely picked up a book. Um, I am still, in fact, ooh, I'm still reading The Hod King, which was supposed to be my January book. Um, I am about halfway through now um, and I am still enjoying it and I do intend to finish it. Now that I'm getting used to the care, I think I'm going to have more time to read. I'm actually going to read a little bit more of this uh, after I've finished this video. Um, I managed. I actually picked this up for the first time in, um, in a, a good few days yesterday. Um, and I, I read a couple of chapters. I'm going to read some today. I'm going to back, get back into that. Um, I haven't picked up the PlayStation in over a week. So I've not been playing any video games either. Um, I was kind of hoping I could go back and play Horizon Zero Dawn again, uh, ready for Horizon Forbidden West, which comes out in a few days. I have that on pre-order. Um, I'm looking forward to playing that, so that'll be interesting. I um, I did want to read through Moby Dick as my classic for uh, this month. That's still my intention, though my Leatherbound has been cancelled. I ordered it, it cost me £35, it immediately got uh, it immediately went through, everything was set up, then they cancelled it without informing me, didn't tell me, didn't send me an email or anything. Uh, I went back on, it's now selling for £72.50. It's fairly obvious why they cancelled it, isn't it? Yeah, anyway. 
different. So I do still have a copy of Moby Dick though. I don't have a leather bound unfortunately, uh, but I do have a Penguin Classic paperback so I can read from that. Other than that, there's not been a great deal happening for me. It's been very slow going, but I think that this is a good move and I feel better today um, mentally, not necessarily physically. I'm in a fair bit of pain already, but I feel better today mentally than I have done in a long time. I feel more optimistic. I feel that with the meals being prepared for me, my house is clean. It's genuinely clean, not just uncluttered. Uh, the kitchen is clean from top to bottom. Um, the worktops are all clean, the dishes are all washed, everything's clean. The bathroom is clean, the living room is clean and hoovered. It's a delight to be in my home now because those were things I couldn't reasonably do. If I spent time cooking, I didn't have time to do anything else. If I stood in the kitchen and washed dishes, I would put myself in so much pain that that would be the only thing I'd do that day. I physically couldn't lift the hoover, so the hoovering didn't get done for weeks. Um, it was just, It's things like that, and then there's, there's the fact that before I was receiving care, I would go days without showering because it was painful to shower and difficult to wash. And my hair would often go weeks without being washed because I couldn't wash it myself. This care was a long time coming and these hernias have made it much worse. Um, I could have done half of the things that I'm asking the carers to do myself before the hernias. And when the care was being put forward in December, I was only expecting partial care. I now need total care. So that's changed a few things. Um, a few people did say that um, with me needing the care, needing to make uh, financial contributions towards this, with my utility bills going up and things like that, my finances have been strained. Um, not as much as I thought they'd be, uh, but they have been strained. And um, that if I wanted to, I should consider crowdfunding. I was reluctant at first. I thought that, that was a bad move because I'm not going to be able to reliably make videos. Um, I would like to be able to reliably make videos, but it's a struggle. That said, people said that they wanted to um, contribute anyway, so I opened up a Patreon, and I'm going to link that uh, down below. Uh, if you want to contribute, then by all means, I've set two tiers, well, technically three, but that's really just to, just so there's a joke there. You'll see what I mean if you if you go onto it. There's a one a one pound tier and a five pound tier. I don't know how much that is in other currencies. I think it might be like two dollars and eight dollars, something like that. I'm not sure. But um, officially, Patreon does not recommend tiers below three pound because apparently they uh, that they're not very effective because you start to pay taxes on it. So if you only donate one pound, a substantial percentage of it ends up going towards taxes and fees. So you end up with a lesser percentage of the donation. But at the same point, a £3 donation, I think that translates to about $5. We're getting into the range now where that's almost as much as some of the low-end streaming services. And I am not worth that much if you're only paying for content. Like if you if you want to donate that much, then fair enough. But um, like if I'm only able to put out a couple of videos a month, maybe if I'm lucky a video a week, then... I, I should price accordingly and I think um, I think just throwing a quid that you you know you're not going to notice a pound going out of your account then if you can spare that by all means uh, but if if you can't if you're not financially stable yourself or hell if you just don't want to don't feel any obligation um, I was again reluctant to do it because you know what the internet's like you always get these uh, these self-righteous people who criticize anyone who does any kind of crowdfunding because they're e-begging and um, they're, apparently that's the, the worst evil you can possibly do to some people on the internet. Um, but yeah, I, I, a few people wanted to help me and I, I appreciate them greatly. Um, in fact, you'll be seeing a list of them in this video um, below because um, I now ha have official patrons. So yeah. That's something. Um, if uh, if you want to add yourself to the list, you're very welcome. You'll be listed below in every, well. You'll be listed at the end of every video, um, and uh, I will I I will say I am completely 
in awe of the fact that anyone would want to pay any money towards uh, towards this. It's it's just a vlog channel, um, and I am I am so very grateful that people actually care enough to try to to help me through this. Um, I wasn't expecting it, and I still don't feel entirely deserving of it. But at the same point, I'm not in a position to cut my nose off to spite my face. So, all I can say is thank you to those who, who want to do this. I I do really appreciate it. it. It is not going unnoticed. And the amount that I'm currently getting um, will, at present, uh, pay for a, a, subs a, a decent amount of, of my care. If I got, uh, if I got about four to five times as much uh, on my Patreon that I currently have, um, that should probably cover my care. So I'm not, I, I'm not actually outside of the, uh, the possibilities of get, getting enough on Patreon that my care could be completely paid for. And if that's the case, that would be fantastic because that would lift all the financial burden completely. So I, I'm going to try and record a couple more videos um, I haven't been reading anything, so I can't make any book-based videos. I do have a response I wanted to do to uh, Steve Donahue, which I haven't got round to. I will try and make that fairly soon, because um, I want to make it while it's still at least vaguely topical. But I've got a couple of other videos that I'm thinking of making that I can do that are a fairly low effort for me. Um, a few videos where most of the effort would be in uh, the editing and the footage gathering, which I've largely already done. Some of the ones I've had in like pre-production for a good few months now. Um, I've got a couple of gaming videos like that. Um, I've got a couple of top 10 videos um, and like tips videos. And a couple of people were asking if I was going to make any more role-playing videos, like tips for GMs or uh, tips for running Dungeons and Dragons games, that kind of thing. And honestly, I'd been planning to make more of those. I made a single video, I think, and then never got back to them. So yes, those are things I'm definitely going to get back to. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's my situation and a little update. Thanks to everyone who's been following along and all the well wishes. It's meant the world to me. It really has. And I will keep you informed as best I can on my situation. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just a little delayed and a little setback. I'm still here, and uh, you'll be seeing more of me, don't worry. Until next time, bye.